Hi, welcome to Board Gems. In this video, I'll be comparing two editions of what are essentially the same game, Hansa, a 2004 release from Abacus Spiele, and a newer edition from 2020, Traders of the Air, from Compass Games. Here you can see the two editions. The original Hansa has an Uberplay mark, which was an English publisher from back in the day. They released a lot of Abacus games in the English language market. It is in a, what at the time was a pretty typical Abacus long skinny box. And Traders of the Air is not quite Agricola size. It's a little bit smaller, but those same general proportions. The stats on the box are the same. Two to four players, 60 minutes-ish, and ages 10 and up. All of which I think are pretty fair. You can see just how thin the original Hansa was. In the backs of the boxes, Traders of the Air is an English slash German release. Hansa was originally German and this edition was in English. If we look inside the box, Hansa has a typical cardboard insert and all the components fit nicely in a very shallow well because again, the box is quite thin. Traders of the Air has no insert, not that one is really necessary. A lot of empty space in the box. Comparing rule books, Hansa in general is a pretty simple game and the Abacus edition or the Uberplay edition really kind of leans into that. It's a very short rule book, but it has lots of text, kind of a wall of text, I suppose. Could probably use more graphics, but it's just basically a single sheet, single fold. There's a bit more to the rule book in the new edition. Here are the boards. You can see this is kind of a one-to-one -one mapping here. The arrows and the cities and how many spaces are in the cities are all pretty much the same. Obviously the names are different except for Copenhagen and New Copenhagen. The new edition has a little bit of a bigger board and is more colorful. The old edition is, is very understated. I like the old edition's look. It's a very mature look to me. <laughs> but yes, the new edition's board is a little bit larger than the old edition's. The new edition has a slightly steampunk theme. Doesn't really come through very much in the components. But some people just gosh darn love fantasy. And anything about trading along a sea is considered to be very boring. And Hansa's understated graphics do not fight that accusation very much. I wouldn't say the new edition's graphics are amazing. They're fine. Like both editions, it's very practical, utilitarian, I suppose. Now the new edition does have a double-sided board, and this is the reverse of the board. This side of the board is easier, has more arrows, and the rule book actually suggests using this for your first game and using the original Hansa board for a mm, slightly more experienced game. Now it wouldn't be a new release without individual player powers. Here we are. So there's eight to choose from in the new edition. Each of these eight boards has a special ability, which is unique to the player who has it. I never play with these, so I can't give an opinion about them, but some people are going to think that just having them in the box is a good thing, right? For the first game, certainly you can consider not playing with these. And on the reverse is just a plain, a plain steampunk blimp. <laughs> How plain can a steampunk blimp really be? But this is a small little board you use to store your money, equivalent to the money pouch in the original Hansa. Old fashioned looking coins made of cardboard and the new additions are also cardboard, but they're like steampunk coins made of a metal that is not gold. I mean, I think the theme breaks down a little bit, but <laughs> it's fantasy, you can make it whatever you want, right? Now the original had, of course, a ship. And the new one, it's a blimp. The ship was a little bit larger and easier to move around the board. You can see the goods here. The original's tokens showed one, two, or three barrels. And the new edition, it shows digits one, two, and three. The player colors are a little bit different. You have yellow and white in both, but you have gray and purple in the original and black and green in the new. I think that the old edition just really came together really well with the understated graphics on the board and the muted colors kind of came together in a cohesive whole graphic wise. And the new edition, I mean, black and white and yellow and green, they're really bright colors. They do pop up off the board. They're fine. In the game, it is important to remember who started the game because you play an equal number of turns. So the new edition does come with a pawn to help you mark that and a coin, which you can use for a 
goofy little variant that allows you to uh, change the arrows, the, the winds, I suppose, the trade winds, to change their direction. Never play with it personally. Now, it is important to note that the new edition has a change in scoring. The original scoring from Hansa is still there and is still exactly the same, but the new edition now has a grand total of, I think, four additional ways of scoring points. <laughs> it's a smorgasbord of points. Kind of a, uh, what's the word they use for that? Yeah, it's definitely in the point salad direction. <laughs> you get points for this, you get points for that, you get points for all sorts of things in the new edition. It does make the game, I feel, a little bit directionless because whatever you do, you'll get points. The question is, will you get enough? Hansa is a little bit more directed in that these are the things that are going to give you points, these are the things that are important to do. And the question is, how do you execute? Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Hansa don't stop being good just because Traders of the Air comes out. All right, take care.